Catherine Zuber, the costume designer for How to Succeed in Business Without Really Trying. And we're here, uh, I share a studio with Derek McLean, the set designer for the show. And we're here in our uh, conference room with um, some items from the show to show you. From the minute I'm hired, the first thing, of course, is to read the script and to sort of do a breakdown of the script according to the characters and uh, scenes with ensemble members to kind of determine how many people are in the scene, what are they doing, and then in a show like this, of course, what is their movement? The movement is so important. What we have here is, um, this is from the old Ivy scene, and these are the um, uh, football, the football costume that was made by Yuriko Costumes. We weren't quite sure of um, exactly what type of football player we wanted to investigate, and um, Rybash had felt that it should be that Big Lee was remembering his youth, so it should be more uh, based in the 30s. So we did a lot of research on what went into those uniforms at that time. We had to build in, for quick change purposes, the socks, the knee pads, and everything is all built in to one item that then goes, um, um, a football shoe goes over this. But because the change is so quick, um, it just had to be quite efficient. And the great thing about having this be one unit, too, is that we never have to worry that their socks are going to fall down or the knee pad is going to slip. <laughs> this is a pair of the men's shoes from the show, uh, which were made by T.O. Day. And, and just like the women's shoes, they're, they're very flexible so that, uh, the men can point their feet. And they're also made with a, a soft like rubber heel uh, for comfort. Um, whereas a traditional men's dress shoe probably would have like a wooden heel which wouldn't work out for uh, the guys. A great uh, artist that we work with is Jeff Fender and uh, he did all this uh, hand painting on these island girl costumes. This was white fabric that then he did um, relief and over dyed and did all these black paint, um, paint lines on it and um, I just love uh, his work and it's just one example of all the wonderful artists that uh, contribute so much to um, a show. We went to FIT and went through the archives, um, uh, looked at uh, magazines of the time period, and I have a collection of magazines here uh, from, from the 60s. And um, also, um, I was very interested in a film called Playtime by Jack Tati. Uh, a French director, which is about an office environment that had a very um, artistically rendered um, office uh, um, space with uh, very, a very controlled palette in terms of the costumes, which I thought, I found that to be quite effective. For the principals, it's very important to track their story in terms of the journey they're taking uh, within the piece. Um, for instance, Rosemary starts out as sort of a young uh, uh, secretary, and as we move through the story, she gets a job promotion, her clothing gets a little more sophisticated, and then at the very end, she's reached her dream of being, you know, a wife um, in New Rochelle that's come into the city to meet her husband for lunch, so she's a lady of leisure. The interesting thing about the blue bow tie that um, Daniel uh, Radcliffe wears as J. Pierpont, um, Finch is that uh, it was first developed by the producers and the um, artists that designed the advertising campaign as the right color um, for the visuals of the poster and other publicity that was developed. And we felt that um, in, in going through the designs that uh, it, it was quite charming to keep that blue bow tie as his signature piece and no matter what happened to him, um, going up the ladder and then, you know, for a brief moment down the ladder and then way up again, that he always had on that blue bow tie, that that was his constant. These are some composites uh, I like to make. All of these sketches are individually done, but then we scan them into the computer and sort of um, then put how people are appearing in the each scene. And then as we're swatching, we put little pieces of the fabrics um, over these sketches so we get sort of an uh, overview of how the colors are coming together. This is an example of the original sketches that we do before they're scanned and 
Uh, here we have the Island Girls and um, a Paris original. And this is um, some of the research. We kind of go to FIT and here is some great makeup research. Uh, I'd love for you to talk to Ashley Ryan a little bit later and she can explain a little more closely about um, the details. Most of my inspiration comes from all the research that either the Kathy will give me and I do a lot of my own. And so I work with, for this particular show, I worked close with the clothes and what these secretaries and who they are and what they're wearing and then what did their hair look like and what did the girls look like. In the 60s, they wore, as you can see, sometimes they had purple or green eyeshadow and there's a lot of great advertisement with the nail polish where they almost match their eyeshadow with their nail polish. Tammy's a riot. I had a lot of fun working with her and her character is just so over the top. So she had a beauty mark and thick eyelashes and really strong liquid eyeliner and a great bright red lipstick and she was sort of really overdone. Like I think she was a lot like this but more so. Like she was just really bold and Kathy kind of let me have a lot of fun with her. Most of them in their real life don't wear a blue eyeshadow or bright red lipstick every day so I think they have a lot of fun doing it or Tammy wouldn't put on a, a beauty mark. So it was just sort of a fun process. Thank you so much for coming uh, and visiting us at our studio and uh, thank you for all your support for how to succeed in business without really trying and if you haven't seen the show you're in for a big treat. <laughs>